Pick your class and learn your battle points. Because it's time for the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast. Welcome to episode 147 of the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast. I'm your host, Sage Goodwin, joined by my brother and co-host, Sam Goodwin. Hello there. In this episode, we'll be going over the newest community transmission, our thoughts on Grievous, and much more. Let's get started. Let's get started with the incoming transmission. Star Wars is full of stories where trusted friends and companions adventure together. And Star Wars Battlefront 2 is no different. One of our favorite things to hear about is when a player does something awesome. But it's even better when it's done with a friend or ally on the battlefront. It's these types of moments that we want to help create. And the new squad system aims to do just that. Coming in the September update, the new squad system will allow you to rejoin your friends, allies, and the action much quicker than before. The Glossary Before we break down the squad system, we thought we should clarify a selection of naming conventions that will be used throughout this transmission. Game groups. These are formed within the social hub menu of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Squads. These are groups of four players that enter a game mode together. Platform party. These are groups that are formed outside of Star Wars Battlefront 2 as part of your platform of choice. So parties on uh, Xbox or PlayStation. Where's the cross-platform party? You'll have to talk to PlayStation about that. We should highlight that there is no connection between a platform party and game groups. There's one exception, and this occurs on PlayStation 4, where players can create a game group outside of the game with the Play Together feature. Forming a group. If you're already playing with a group of friends as either a game group or platform party, you will be placed together into a squad. If your members are less than four, then random players or other groups will fill your squad. If you join a game on your own, you will be placed into a random squad. Squads persist between rounds on the same map. However, new squads are formed when switching maps. When new squads are formed, you will always be put into one with the members of your game group. But if your group consists of less than four, the random people or other game groups that make up your squads can change. If you join a game group late and they are already in a game, you will join the squad if there's space. If there is no space in that squad, then you will join a random squad until the maps are switched. At this point, you will join the squad with your game group. Uh, What are your thoughts on this so far? So so far it sounds solid. It does sound solid. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. This is adding a flair of Battlefield to it a bit, uh, which I think this game would really benefit from. Definitely would be an improvement over the whole system of Battlefront 2015. Now that you can actually squawn into, um, spawn into squads, compared to you know just being a party, you'd have to like sync up your locations on the map. Yeah. Um, and it's much easier now to actually form the groups, keep a consistent team, Going through, we'll get into this a little bit later. Now let's go into how the spawn system actually works. When you are defeated, you will have the ability to toggle through a spectator camera. This camera will focus on one of your squad members, and you will then have the ability to spawn directly onto them. When to spawn on a different squad member, simply toggle through the spectator camera until you find the squad member of your choosing. The ability to spawn directly onto your squad will be limited to the following modes, Galactic Assault and Strike. The reason why the squad system is limited to these modes is because we need to ensure the gameplay balance remains intact. It works well for Galactic Assault due to its large size, but from our testing we found that it can become quite powerful. We will be rolling it out onto strike as a test case for smaller modes and the potential to roll it out to other smaller modes is there based on your feedback once defeated you will be given the chance to go back to the class selection menu and spawn immediately back into action once the respawn timer runs out so let's just hope that it's obviously balanced because if you're having a 1v1 and then some random guy spawns in it's kind of unfair so like in overwatch they have this uh, this kind of system almost. Uh, also, Battlefront 2015 had this, where you could spawn on your partner, um, but you could only res- but you could only spawn on your partner if uh, they weren't in danger, meaning they weren't getting shot. Yeah, and that was like completely almost broken because I'm not gonna wait around on the screen. But it honestly, depend if you're in a party, you're obviously gonna know what your um, party members are experiencing in their battles. So. You can sync that up. Yeah, this is this update will change how the game is played. It will... I, I think this won't actually affect, like you're saying, the time about spawning and all that because it already takes forever to get back to the spawn menu. True. So 
uh, a little extra to decide who you're going to spawn on isn't going to be a big deal, I think. But I th I'm really looking forward to seeing how this affects the gameplay. I'm calling this update that we'll probably be getting like September 29th or something like that. The quality of life update. Uh, because we're getting this huge change to the squad and spawn systems. 2v2 Joining a 2v2 game, such as Hero Showdown, while in a 4-player group will enable you to play a private match. This is just a tiny section, it's literally one sentence. It's like, oh, yeah, we're adding uh, private parties to uh, a private match to Battlefront 2. Now on the voice chat, no! You can play Hero Showdown in a four-player group in a private match now with so, this update coming out later this month. 2v2 versus like people you know. Yeah, so you can get a party, you can get a group in the game, which you go up to uh, your little icon in the upper left-hand corner, click that, choose the people you want to add into your group, and then uh, there, there has to be some kind of like button or something you press to have a private match or something. And you can all play together in Hero Showdown. Because... Even the private matches in Battle for 2015 were like my favorite thing to do, especially with like Hero Hunt. Mm -hmm. You can have some a lot of fun with that. Yes, private matches were so great, and it's it's good to keep them to the smaller game modes because obviously that's going to be the the way you use that. Because it's honestly not hard to get uh, three other players in with you. Not really. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's going to be really fun, and hopefully it means that private matches will be coming into the other game modes uh i would really want to see that maybe we can start having some tournaments due to the private matches yeah i i can definitely see that happening uh hero showdown tournaments oh yeah heck yeah voice chat voice chat will be turned off for any four player squads that have been formed at random you'll be able to enable voice chat with your friends through either your platform system or by using the Star Wars Battlefront 2 option. Please note that selecting your platform's voice chat feature will override the end game option. So they're adding voice chat as well. It says it will be turned off for random squads, but if you have a squad made up of uh, just friends, then uh, you'll be able to use the end game option instead of just the platform, which is you gotta go in and make a party, add the people there, deal with uh, headphone issues and that kind of thing, but it will be built in now. Ongoing adjustments. Due to the online nature of this feature, we wanted to highlight that once it goes live, there's a possibility that we will be adjusting things within the live environment. We have built in back-end timers that will affect the length of Galactic Assault objectives just in case we see certain phases in a map being easily exploitable by either side. For further balancing, we are prepared with several kill switches which will enable us to turn the feature on and off per game mode and per map. This will enable us to react quickly should we find balance becoming an issue. We will be watching your feedback closely and will be ready to act accordingly once the squad system goes live later this month. With features that are in development, there are chances that things may change as we progress between now and release, but we'll keep you posted along the way. We're looking forward to hearing what you think in the comments below. Punch it. <laughs> Okay, now now let's talk about uh, the next thing, which is the roadmap. The new and improved roadmap is here. It's been here for about a week or two. So for uh, September, we're getting the, uh, the game improvements, which is the quality of life squad system update. We're also getting uh, two new appearances, the uh, 91st Mobile Reconnaissance Corps and the 104th Wolfpack Battalion Clone Trooper appearance. Then in October... We're getting General Grievous and an appearance. November, we're getting Obi-Wan, plus two appearances. Uh, Geonosis for Galactic Assault. Uh, two new appearances. 212th Attack Battalion Clone Trooper appearances. Uh, new vehicles. New vehicle on Geonosis, the uh, STAP, uh, the BARC Speeder, and the ATTE. Then in winter, we're getting Count Dooku and Anakin Skywalker. We're getting uh, the new game mode uh, featuring capture points and capital ship takedowns. And then uh, new appearances, the Coruscant Guard Clone Trooper appearances and the 501st Legion Clone Trooper appearances. Let's let's break it down. So on Twitter, this is uh, this is what I had to say about it. September, nice quality of life improvements. Looking forward to the new squad system. October, other than Grievous, nothing much. November, November 
is loaded with awesomeness. Quote unquote winter. Still no breakdown on what winter means. But it, I think it looks good in content. So far, I mean, the roadmap it has been outlining better than the uh, first iterations. Yes. Well, when you just had fall. <laughs> You can't really do much worse so than that. So in the year 2018, we're getting this, this, and this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as you said, September, nice little update, but we need some meat. And by meat, I mean General Grievous. Uh, which we'll be getting next month. Hopefully it's actually in the middle of the month or at the beginning of the month. Oh my gosh. Are you uh, kidding me? That's actually possible? So I hear. So I hear. Yeah, so basically it's going to probably mean November for Grievous. Basically. Pretty much. I expect it will be late October. We have nothing to go off of that would imply that would be any earlier. All of the previous updates that we've had, when they say a month, they mean the last possible second in that month. But EA is running out of months in this year. They're just like dropping little things every month. It's about to be 2019. Uh, what I think will be the big test of this will be Battlefield's launch. I want to see what that's going to do with the game Battlefront 2. I want to see what everything looks like in terms of server activity. Battlefront players and Battlefield players, for the most part, I think are a pre or somewhat separate crowd. A lot of people that play Battlefield play Battlefront. A lot of people that play Battlefront play Battlefield. But I think for the majority, if you play Battlefront, you are a Battlefront player. So I'm interested to see if a drop-off will happen once that launches and to see what the uh, the return slash re release cycle for the uh, the next season will be. And especially during the winter months. Yeah, because they're going to be pushing this new game. So we might not have like the content. Even We're not even used to content at this point. So it really won't be, even be a change of pace. But I'm really interested to see how they're going to keep pushing content after this new game releases. Mm -hmm. the, we're still going to be getting everything on the roadmap. But I want right. to see what that looks like when it goes into 2019. Will we be getting more content in 2019? That's what I want to know. I want to know if this game will be pushed and pushed and continued to be updated and yes. uh, looked at as a viable thing for uh, putting resources into. I just want to know the future of Battlefront at this point. Because, you know, it's already been a year for Battlefront to just about. And the content hasn't been there, so it doesn't even feel like the game's begun. We've yeah. said this before. So I'm going to assume that they're going to push it through 2019 and see where it takes them from there. I hope so. Because I hope... I, I've won a Battlefront 3 Yes, uh, but I also want this game to be continued. I don't think they are in a state where they could release a Battlefront 3. I don't think the community is in the right mindset if they yeah. do release a battle or make a battle for three announce it or even rumor immediately there's going to be oh why are you making a new game when Battlefront 2 is always like already like this. Yeah, it's kind of because then their publicity is going to carry over to the next game because they haven't fulfilled what they've set out. So they failed this game that they're going to say. So they need to just flesh this game out, make it solid. People, I want to look back at this game, you know, have some nice thoughts about it, like 2015 Battlefront, because that game was awesome. Yes. So th that's the main thing. I'm 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 interested to see what that's going to be like, what uh, the scope of content, if they if we do get content in 2019, what the scope of that will be. I hope we get another season because we've all this will be the second season and it's spread that's out ridiculous. Um, so season three, I hope is something I hope we, it actually happens. And I hope uh, it's a good amount to uh, send the game off if that's the plan or if they're going to go for like the Rainbow Six Siege kind of thing where they push the game. That game's going into its third year and it's still extremely popular. So I hope that uh, Battlefront 2 is one of those things, one of the games that can uh, push that type of content. In a lot of games, it's true that the test of time does work well for it because the, some games start out really bad, but with the release of content, it just starts improving the game to where it becomes a, a fun experience for the players. I hope this is the case with Battlefront 2. Uh, I do as well. The content that we're getting, November, November is going to be a really, really fun month. I, wanna, I just hope this isn't the last season because it seems like they're setting it up for, to be just because, you know, we had every era thus far. Yeah. Starting with the uh, sequel trilogy, original trilogy, and now we're hitting up the uh, the prequels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope that uh, this is just a stepping stone in a long life for Battlefront 2. Let's let's talk about the month of October. So we're just getting uh, General Grievous and appearances. Do you think that's enough for that whole month? I mean, uh, even with 
the man, the myth, the legend himself, General Grievous. I'm not sure if like just one hero and a you know few uh, customization is going to be enough. Because even you know they promised EA Play. Oh look, we're getting these, 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 and these. We're like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. with under the impression that they're going to drop all at once, you know, as yeah. a season. But then Dennis Brandwald cracks the news: this is coming in winter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it it went it went downhill pretty quickly on that. We got the announcement that said, "Hey, Clone Wars see, uh, season is going to get General Grievous, Obi Wan, Anakin, Count Dooku. Boom, mic drop. Four heroes, one season. Mind blow. And Coruscant, and the new game mode. And then the first roadmap comes out, and uh, we see that uh, General Grievous and Obi Wan are in fall, and we see that Anakin Skywalker and Count Dooku are in winter. Oh, so." We're getting both of those separated, which is fine at the same time, right? Third iteration of the uh, roadmap we get. Well, uh, we're not getting those together anymore. We are getting them separated across two months. I'm on the fence about that. I'm I'm looking. I'm wary about this. I think I I, I trust that they'll make the right decision. Um, they're doing it for a reason. Maybe they need extra time on Obi Wan, and they think. General Grievous is enough of a character to add enough content for that whole month. We'll see how that goes. Uh, the main thing I'm worried about is servers. People on uh, Heroes versus Villains that quit when they are on the light side to leave and have a chance at being General Grievous. Yeah, because thus far in the game, you know, we've seen a hero and a villain drop because it's balanced. We don't want one side to, you know, upset the scale, the balance. So we're just going to have all these, you know, people that don't care about you know messing up a game quitting to be the villains as you say and that's gonna happen a lot honestly yeah Uh, it's gonna take a lot for me not to do that because i really just want to play general grievous as much as i can (laughs) as much as humanly possible because if we had obi-wan as well we're like oh yeah i get to try out obi-wan then yeah but no it's like oh um i could but i could slog through this or i could quit and try and get into another uh, game i think hero showdown will be a much more popular game mode with that because you've only got the two and you have a better chance at getting general grievous than and you would normally that's what i was going to say if you're in heroes versus villains there's going to be that guy's practices yeah. thumb muscles to get over there fastest thumb muscles in the west oh yeah i've been waiting <laughs> i've been practicing all month he's hooked directly up to like ethernet over a fiber optic cables and all of that jazz so fastest internet his controller is wired to the console, immediately clicks on General Grievous. Yep, and he stays there. But I think this will push a lot of players to try out the hero modes, so I think that's a good thing. I hope that uh, it is an even amount of time for each of the heroes, since they are being released separately. There isn't like, oh, we get General Grievous in the first of the month, and then uh, we get Obi-Wan at the la- the last possible day in November. I hope that's not the case. Because it could make sense that... I know it's not going to happen, but late October, Grievous drops. Early November, Obi-Wan comes. That would be the best idea ever. But we know that ain't happening. Uh, yeah, it's it's very doubtful that that will happen. So it's it's going to be an interesting journey into the realm of Battlefront 2. I've, I've felt a renewed hope and a new positivity. Did you feel a new hope? Yes, a, a renewed hope in the is, Battlefront is, community. Is that the name of of episode 10 a renewed hope yes in the battlefront community every everyone seems to be much more positive about the content that we're getting and the future of the game i have a uh, question from one of our uh, followers on twitter friend of the podcast eduardo j podcast do you guys think this content is food enough to keep the community engaged for a long time People seem to be super hyped today which is a good thing for battlefront 2 what do you think do you think this is food enough to keep the community going and engaged i mean if we were eating general grievous there wouldn't be much flesh there not enough food no there he is mainly a robot yeah just see that juicy heart and uh obi-wan did a great job of barbecuing it but i doubt it would be enough yeah heart doesn't cook down very well uh and his lungs they aren't that great either okay just got weird (laughs) i think that I don't know, at least for the month of uh, October. I mean, General Grievous is going to get a little worn out after two weeks, I'd say. Because mm-hmm. it's just one item. So, 
Not enough for October, but November is definitely looking good. I think November is the uh, the, the great time. I think November's content it alone is good enough to keep the community going for the month or two before we get the rest of uh, the season. I think overall, this is a good a good amount of content to push us into 2019 and a little bit further out into there. Hopefully, long enough to get some uh, hard facts and details on uh, the content coming in the future you just gotta you just gotta think about the beauty of prequel heroes and villains in this new engine yes um i i I agree with you i think october is that month where we're we're all just waiting we're all we're all like uh general grievous is great but i would really like to play on geonosis right now yeah i would really like to play obi-wan versus general grievous i would really like yeah on geonosis so i think it's it's October is the calm before the storm. Uh, it's not debatable. That's what it is. It's the uh, the filler. It's like, okay, uh, we don't really have anything for October. So let's take on... But take General on Grievous something. is ready. General Grievous is ready, so we'll put him in October. I mean, he is the most requested villain. Yes. So they're, they're trying the to The hype is up there, yeah. Um, again, this is going to be a constantly adjusted thing. Every month we're going to get more details. So hopefully it's not just uh, Grievous and uh, appearances, but maybe there's a limited time game mode or something like that. Definitely looking forward to seeing what that's going to be like in the future um, and the content like that. We've got much more planned for the podcast, so do not do not fear. We will continue the podcast. We will continue keeping up the episodes and covering this game. Uh, we've got a lot of cool stuff planned. I'm planning another uh, documentary style uh, battlefront podcast episode similar to our episode of uh the podcast called on the battlefront so i'm i'm researching and writing that as we speak my goal is for episode 150 big celebration we'll see how that goes uh, on the battlefront was our two-year anniversary but i think it's a good time for something like that uh, looking at the state of the game before battlefront 2's Vegas launch. That's about it for this episode of the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast. I've been your host, Sage Goodwin. I am Sam Goodwin. You can support us a multiple of ways. Uh, one is through Patreon, patreon.com slash Podcast. Our Patreon supporters is a great help. It's a reason that we uh, keep the podcast going, among many others. And it's just really helpful uh, to help us pay for the hosting for the podcast and uh, the subscription for Adobe Audition. Shout out to my bro, Preston helping us out with the podcast, uh, supporting us with uh, Adobe Audition. So if you would like to support us through that way, you can. Uh, you can also support us through PayPal, paypal.me slash tie-dye sheep, or completely free way, and we appreciate it so, so much. Leaving a review on uh, your podcast app, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, wherever you listen to podcasts, we would appreciate it. Uh, your thoughts and your input and your reviews it really helps us out a ton it gets us your feedback and it also lets uh the podcast providers know that the show is continuing and uh, people are uh finding the show and enjoying it you can email us another great way to contact us battlefrontpodcast at gmail.com you can follow us on twitter one of the best ways to keep up on the news talk to us about battlefront overall great place that is at swb podcast our youtube channel is youtube.com slash the star wars battlefront podcast and you can listen to the show on itunes soundcloud stitcher google play or anywhere you find podcasts as always thanks for listening and may the force be with you